Looking under pressure. We're live. We may start the meeting. All right. Uh, welcome, everybody, to the uh, Monday, March 8th uh, meeting, uh, regular meeting of uh, Kimberley City Council held on the uh, Tanaha homelands. Hope everybody has had a good week and uh, a good start to the week. So uh, first up, as usual, we have our ministerial uh, order allowing us to uh, be online. Um, some people here, some not, and to uh, broadcast via YouTube to the general public. Mover, please. Thank you, Councillor Dallum. Second, Councillor Roberts. Thank you. All those in favor? The motion is carried. All right, we have um, a couple of uh, public hearings this evening. Um, bear with me here while I get uh, through here. We have three late items. Thank you. Hang on one second. Let me get to my. Uh, Okay, we have three late, that was the updates, I guess, to the uh, agenda this evening. Um, three late items uh, pertaining to 217 uh, Stemwinder Drive, uh, to the development variance permit for 323 Bank Street, and for the, uh, uh, for the uh, public hearing uh, zoning amendment for Mark Street. Uh, do we have any other late items at this point, Maurice? Uh, there was an amendment to the notice of closed meeting to add a uh, section 2B, the consideration of information received in the held in confidence related to negotiation between the municipality and provincial government. So that's, uh, that was to allow the addition of a late item to the in-camera agenda. All right, given those four uh, items, could I have a mover to adopt the agenda? Councillor Goodwin, thank you. And Councillor Dallum seconds. All those in favor? That motion is uh, carried. Next up, we have the adoption of uh, council and, and uh, committee minutes of February the 22nd. Council minutes of the regular meeting, I should say, on February 22nd. Councillor Dallin moves. Councillor Kiddo seconds. All those in favor? That uh, motion is carried. All right, so we will go to the, uh, to the two um, uh, public hearings. Uh, first up, we have uh, first up, we have a, um, an overview of procedure that I need to read out. I uh, appreciate, appreciate everybody's patience while I do that. So uh, this evening, we will be hearing submissions uh, by telephone. If any, anyone is listening via the YouTube stream that would like to share their comments on these bylaws, uh, the number to call is 1-800-741-7180. Uh, and if you are prompted for a meeting number or an access code, that number is 187-598-5064. And if you're asked for a password, simply enter, uh, uh, simply press the hashtag or the, uh, the pound key, uh, the pound symbol. Uh, once you're connected, you'll be able to hear the meeting, but will be muted on hold until it's your turn to speak. And if you're listening to the live stream while on the phone, please make sure your mute uh, is turned on or the volume is down. Uh, so that uh, we don't get any audio feedback. You may let us know uh, that you would like to uh, speak by entering uh, star nine on the phone, uh, which is uh, raise your hand, star nine to raise your hand. And uh, you will know when it's your turn to speak when you hear that uh, your microphone has been unmuted. So a uh, little bit of a process there. I uh, appreciate everybody's uh, help in advance in uh, dealing with the uh, process. So uh, we ask everybody to be patient. Uh, we're gonna move slowly so we uh, don't miss uh, any, uh, any speakers or comments. So any person who believes that their interest uh, in property is affected by the proposed bylaw will be given an opportunity to be heard. No one will be or should feel discouraged or prevented from making their views known. Members of council may ask questions uh, uh, of you during the presentation for clarification purposes only. And it's important to remember the main function of council uh, is to listen. It is, after all, a hearing uh, and listen to the comments presented and not debate the merits of the proposal uh, or any of the comments that are presented. You'll be given five minutes for your presentation, and I will call for presentation three times before closing the hearing. Once the public hearing is closed, members of council cannot take any further input regarding the proposed amending bylaw 
And after this public hearing is concluded, Council may, without further notice, give whatever effect Council believes is proper to the representations made at this hearing. So thanks for, uh, thanks for your cooperation uh, and your patience. Uh, with that, um, I am going to uh, turn it over to Troy for an overview of the uh, public hearing for bylaw 2680. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, bylaw 2680 is an amendment to the uh, Alpine zoning bylaw to rezone the property located at 217 Stemwinder Drive from the leisure, leisure Park 1 zone to the residential tourist accommodation zone for the purposes of allowing the development of a single family dwelling. 217 Stemwinder Drive is currently zoned as LP1 and as the parcel falls within the broader resort lands that are designated for park recreational uses or reserved for future development. The parcels to the northwest, including the lots from 216 to 257 Stemwinder have previously been rezoned as RTA1 and RTA8 to offer single family and two family uh, residential developments in the area. 217 Stemwinder was not included in the previous rezoning application due to pre-existing utility rights away that are no longer required. The current owner, Resorts of the Canadian Rockies, applied for a zoning amendment for this property to allow for the development of a single family dwelling. A section of the Peak to Plateau Trail passes through the rear of this property. A new statutory right of way over the rear over the rear portion of the parcel or relocation of the trail is required prior to any final approval of rezoning to ensure continued public access on that portion of the trail. That's it for the summary, Mr. Mayor. All right, awesome. Yeah, thanks for that, Troy. Uh, much appreciated. Um, I think that's the third time that you've been through the summary. Um, and I think uh, council is pretty, uh, pretty clear on exactly uh, what's being proposed. So I will now call, <clears throat> pardon me, I will now call for uh, representations the first time. Councillor Goodwin. I just wanted to comment that we do have a written submission. Yeah, one of the late items was a written submission from the uh, from the Colberts. Yep, thank you for that. So uh, I will call for submissions the first time. Is there anyone uh, who wishes to speak on this? There is nobody on the call, Mr. Mayor. So I'll call for uh, submissions a second time. Again, right. there's nobody on the call. <laughs> Hearing none, I will call for submissions a third time. And so with no further submissions, the public hearing for proposed bylaw 2680 is now closed. We'll be uh, dealing with this item a little bit later on in the meeting uh, this evening. All right, next up, <clears throat> pardon me, we have a, uh, a second public hearing this evening. Uh, it's a zoning amendment bylaw for uh, 495 Mark Street. Um, I think um, the process is exactly as I had read out the first time. I won't, uh, I won't bother reading through that uh, yet again. Uh, so what I will ask at this uh, point is for Troy to give us an overview of, uh, of what we have on this particular, uh, this particular bylaw. Thank you again, Mr. Mayor. Uh, proposed bylaw 2678 <clears throat> is an amendment to the zoning bylaw 1850. Uh, to prezone the property located at 495 Mark Street from C1 Commercial Zone to the DMU2 Downtown Mixed Use Zone. The amendment would allow for the applicant to build a new duplex two-family dwelling on the parcel. I'll also clarify that there's other uses that would be allowable under the, under the DMU zoning, uh, but that is uh, what the uh, proponents are uh, proposing at this time. The property at 495 Mark Street is currently an undeveloped lot abutting a single-family home to the west, a veterinary clinic to the east, and a building supply yard to the north. It is designated as commercial in the official community plan. Allowing this application for the rezoning of the parcel will allow the proponent to move forward with construction of a duplex two-family dwelling. The current C1 zone allows for a range of uses, primarily focused on commercial development, while the C1 zone has provisions that allow for existing residential uses to continue or for multifamily or accessory residential units to be established. It does not allow for the construction of a new single or two-family dwelling. Rezoning the parcel to DMU2 will allow for the property owner to move forward with the construction, increasing the housing stock in Kimberley while allowing the parcel to maintain flexibility of allowing commercial uses in the future. That's it for the overview, Mr. Mayor. Awesome, thank you, Troy. Maurice, do we have any any written submissions or additional written submissions on this uh, on this bylaw? 
There was one additional submission on their late item. All right, awesome. I think uh, I think council has seen that, correct? Excellent. All right, with that then, I will call uh, a first time for submissions. There is nobody on the line, Mr. Mayor. Hearing none, I will call a second time for submissions. There is still nobody on the line. All right, and uh, I will then call a third time for submissions. And uh, hearing none, uh, and there being no further submissions, uh, the public hearing for proposed bylaw 26, uh, uh, 2680 is now closed. All right, thanks folks. So we'll move on now to, uh, uh, to uh, deal with the uh, 217 stem winder drive um, zoning amendment. Uh, we have a uh, motion on the table, and that is that council approve third uh, reading. Uh, could I have a mover, please? Councillor Kittle, thank you. And seconded, uh, Councillor Roberts. All right, uh, discussion. You go ahead. So it looks like from the letter we received uh, lately at, at the beginning of the meeting tonight that a resolution has been reached regarding the uh, concerns of the person who had bought the lot adjacent and it sounds like they're okay with moving forward with this. Thank you for that, Ken. Did you have any additional uh, comments, Troy? Uh, uh, nothing really to add. I uh, concur with uh, Councillor Goodwin's um, statement observation there. Uh, the, the adjacent owner has indicated that they're okay with this proceeding um, and I heard, heard the same from the applicant. Um, I also did hear that uh, um, they will be uh, they're clear on kind of next steps if council proceeds with the with the uh, third reading here uh, to work to resolve the trail issue and uh, we'll be working closely with them uh, to, to get that taken care of and and uh, I'm assuming uh, council moves forward with third reading tonight we'll uh, work to bring it, bring the bylaw back at a future meeting for for adoption Excellent. Yeah, I think the uh, the staff report on this on what next steps are, what has to be done was really clear, Troy. Thank you very much for that. So exactly. I will now call the question. All those in favor? That motion is carried. All right. Next up, we have, <coughs> pardon me, the uh, uh, the zoning amendment bylaw twenty six seventy eight for four ninety five Mark Street. We have um, actually uh, third reading uh, as well as adoption. We'll start with third reading. Could I have a mover, please? Councillor McBain, thank you. Councillor Robert seconds. Further discussion? All those in favor? Oh, we had a, a letter <clears throat> at the beginning of the meeting as well arrive, and I just wondered if Troy would comment on some of the issues raised in that letter. All right, Troy, could you do that? Yes, I can. Uh, thank you. Um, Thanks, I did speak with, with the... Uh, uh, Mr. Miller, the uh, author of that letter, and uh, sort of walked through, talked through the questions that he had, and, and uh, I think uh, I would summarize and say that overall he's he's um, supportive of the of the request, and, and uh, had some quick questions related to his own property next door, um, and he did uh, we did talk about the uh, uh, the one concern about the parking. Um, and, uh, and I talked about that uh, that could be resolved uh, at the development stage to make sure that they're compliant with the uh, bylaw requirements there when when uh, further details come forward on the on the proposed structure. All right, very good. Uh, further comments, Kent? Uh, no, parking was one issue I saw there as well. Yep. It's a duplex and not a lot of space. So if you think we can resolve that, that's good. All right, thank you for that. Yeah. So uh, further comments? Hearing none, I'll call the question. All those in favor of third reading, uh, that motion is carried. And uh, next up we have the, uh, uh, we have uh, a resolution to, uh, for council to adopt uh, 2678. Uh, mover please. Councillor McBain, thank you. Councillor Goodwin seconds. Any further discussion on that? All those in favor, the motion is carried. All right, next up, we have the City of Kimberley Revenue Anticipation Bylaw. 
Uh, this is for adoption. We've been through three readings. Councillor Roberts moves and uh, Councillor Dallin seconds. Uh, do we have any discussion? Hearing none, we'll call the question. All those in favor, that motion is carried. Okay, next up we have the development variance permit uh, for uh, 323 uh, Bank Street. Could I have a, uh, a mover, please? Councillor Kiddo moves and Councillor McBain seconds. Discussion, Troy. Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, we uh, sent out notice to the uh, adjacent residents and property owners um, and uh, did uh, just receive the one comment that was received earlier by council in the uh, late item submissions there. Um, uh, I think uh, the comments were re with regard to the uh, pr proposed uh, new surface parking stalls in behind the building with access off the lane. Um, and uh, I would just comment to that, that uh, again, we'll, we'll uh, um, make sure, I guess, that uh, that, that arrangement uh, meets, our, meets our requirements and standards there. Um, I think it's a fairly common condition uh, that's seen and other other locations as well. Um, it, you know, it, it just given snow conditions at certain times and the way snow is piled and everything else. Uh, sometimes there is restricted access, but um, I think that uh, you know the good thing is here they can they can try to uh, address that here right from the start and try to make sure there's uh, some extra space for uh, maneuvering vehicles in and out of those stalls. Uh, apart from that, uh, no other uh, submissions were received. Um, and staff is recommending that uh, council approve the variances as requested. And uh, there's a secondary uh, resolution there to uh, approve the development permit for the overall project. Councillor Goodwin, or uh, Councillor Oakley. Thank you. Beg your pardon. Uh, Troy, I've got a question for you regarding this. Um, the, uh, uh, the parking is uh, one issue that um, is mm -hmm. dealt with at the development uh, stage. Uh, but I, I'm curious about uh, an operational item such as uh, there is one concern in that letter from uh, from the person uh, regarding snow clearing. Is that done uh, dealt with at the is an operational item dealt with at the development stage of that project? Um, well, uh, to some degree, I mean, we, we review uh, that plan as, as part of the overall uh, permitting for the project, um, but some of those issues. Um, um, I mean, there there may be issues operationally with with snow removal in the lane or lack of, or or depending on how you know snow is stored, that kind of thing. So um, it's just something that kind of needs to be responded to, I think, throughout throughout the year, if and when it arises. Thank you, Councillor Dell. So just uh, a point of clarification that um, maybe up to Scott here. It would be up to the property owner to deal with the snow load from their own property, correct? It wouldn't be up to the city to have extra snow from that property being having those parking spaces cleared. So really yeah. to address the concerns of the neighbor, um, there should be fundamentally no change from their effect of snow. Yeah, I don't expect there to be yeah, a charge. Yeah, and yeah. we're not sure exactly what they're planning to do with the snow at this point, but um, you, you know, I, I would beg to differ with Troy a little bit that those operational concerns, we, we work with hundreds, if not thousands of homeowners in town to deal with all of their operational concerns about snow clearing. So further, if I may, Mr. Smith. Go ahead. Uh, it's also against bylaw to take snow from your property and put it in the laneway anyhow. So uh, just, you know, it seems um, yeah. that may be uh, self-explanatory. Yeah. Go ahead, Troy. I think you, you and Scott are bang on there. I, I, I didn't mean to suggest that there would be snow removed from the property and dumped on the lane, although that perhaps maybe is a concern of the neighbor, but uh, it, is the, it is the property owner's responsibility to manage the snow on their property and keep it on their property, not put it on the lane. Um, I was, I think, read, perhaps reading into the comments that, uh, um, that perhaps there was some issue with the way snow was being removed in the lane or, or uh, cleared in the lane. Um, but again, that's, uh, um, if there's a windrow there created from our, our plow, then again, it's on the homeowner to uh, um, 
you know, clear that access to their driveway, make sure they're not interfering with other properties and, and uh, storing that snow on their property. You're good. Absolutely, Mr. Mayor. Is there a, a point of clarification for any public that viewed this? Yeah, no, fair, fair enough. Um, almost any development that happens uh, doesn't matter, matter whether it's a garage or uh, a house, uh, an apartment. The two issues that constantly come up are parking and snow removal. And I think it's important to understand that uh, when a change happens with respect to the configuration, uh, changes happen with respect to how things like snow removal are uh, dealt with as well. And as uh, Scott had said, those are, you know, operational items that we deal with, uh, you know, as the, uh, you know, as the circumstances require. I think it's important for uh, neighbors uh, adjacent to any of these developments to understand that, uh, you know, we we pay attention to those things, and uh, you know, for the most part, the uh, the concerns are uh, uh, are taken care of. So that's that. Uh, I'll call the question then on the development variance permit, which is what this resolution was about. All those in favor? That motion is carried. And now we have uh, a motion to approve the development permit on the same property. Councillor Dalla moves. Councillor uh, Kiddo seconds. Further discussion? All those in favor? That motion is carried. Good, good to see that going ahead uh, in an expedient manner. Uh, next up, we have the uh, sign development uh, variance permit for 435 Ross Street, which is the, uh, the A&W. Uh, the council approved the development's permit. Is the motion on the table? Could I have a mover? Councillor McBain, thank you. And Councillor Robert seconds. Do we have, um, do we have any uh, further discussion on this? Uh, there were no submissions from any of the neighbors, Troy, is that correct? That's correct, no submissions. Um... Uh, recommendation as per the report. All right, awesome. Uh, hearing no uh, comments, uh, call the question. All those in favor? That motion is carried. All right, next up we have the Community Resiliency uh, Investment Program, CRIP, uh, for the 2021 uh, FireSmart grant application. And the motion is that council support uh, the uh, application to uh, the tune of $150,000 for forest fuel hazard mitigation work. And could I have a mover? Councillor Dallum, thank you. Uh, Councillor uh, McBain seconds. Uh, discussion. Do we have any uh, any discussion on this item? I assume we do because we have uh, two firefighters. Yes. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry about Chief. that. We're, uh, uh, playing with our technology here a little bit. So uh, I'm yeah, going to yeah. actually hand this over to Will Booth on this uh, project is this one uh, he's been, uh, he's had it under his wing. Go ahead. All right, go ahead, Will. Hello, everybody. Um, so like Mr. Mayor said, we're just looking for support for the uh, 2021 FireSmart uh, Economic Recovery Fund application. And what that means is uh, we're looking to reduce aerial and surface fuels in uh, several areas in the city, uh, just in line with our CWPP. You'll have to explain what CW. Oh, sorry. Sorry, CWPP for. is uh, the Community Wildfire Protection Plan. Um, that's just been designed and built by the fire department along with Bob Gray. Yep, awesome. Thanks, Will. Uh, do we have any questions? Go ahead, Kent. So I I didn't spend too much time looking at the detailed maps, but you're going to be dealing with some slopes, I think, and there have been concerns in the past. I know with the overweighty hill, I guess it's a, the save on hill now, about removing material and having hydrological problems. Um, is there going to be some way of assessing the impacts if you're like thinning out small trees, etc. Mm -hmm. If there are going to be any hydrological impacts, possibilities. Uh, yeah, no, definitely great question. Uh, it's always on our radar. Um, so, with any soil and vegetation mu movement on grade or any um, percentages like that, we're going to be looking at uh, bringing in a geotech, and that's all based on the forester himself. He'll come in and decide if we need to. But if there are any indicators required, we will be bringing in a geotech. Okay. Okay. Uh, further, Councillor Roberts. Uh, well, I was very happy to see the piece of property that 
it abuts the big hill that goes up the hill above Centennial Hall. That area there makes me very, very nervous. It's overgrown and lots of deadfall and lots of stuff hanging around in there. And I, I've hoped that you would get to it. And I'm glad it's to see it on on the uh, uh, calendar here. All right. Thank you, Council Roberts. Further comments? It's. Uh... It's really amazing the amount of progress uh, that we've been making on our, our fire smarting, particularly inside the uh, the city limits here over the last 10 years or so. Uh, you guys are doing an awesome job. Uh, we'll call the question. All those in favor? That motion is carried. Now, there's a second piece to that motion that I could have rolled in, but I didn't up front. So we'll make this a second motion. And that is the council authorizes the chief admin officer to sign the application on behalf of the city. Uh, Councillor Dallin moves. Councillor Kiddo seconds. All those in favor? That motion is carried. Sorry about that, Maurice. Thanks, guys. I uh, appreciate the input. Thank you. All right, next up, we have another grant uh, uh, for consideration, and that is the uh, Canada Healthy Communities uh, Initiative Grant application. Uh, the, uh, the resolution is to direct staff to develop and submit the application. Could I have a mover, please? Councillor Kiddo, thank you. Seconded by Councillor Dallum. Uh, discussion? Who's going to speak to this? I can, sure. Thank you, Pam. Uh, it's just an application for uh, $115,000 to develop a, a multi use pathway through McDougal Park. Um, so there's a map attached, but it's that uh, it, it's currently a dirt path, and we just want to build a multi-use pathway that the city will maintain um, going forward. Uh, if you look at it now, it's just snow and people kind of beat it down as they walk through, but it's a heavily used pathway and uh, it's one of the priorities in our active transportation network plan. So we'd like to start rolling out some of that plan. All right, awesome. Thanks, Pam. Nigel. Oh, I'm just really glad to see that coming forward. That's just such a beautiful piece of property. That avenue of trees is just simply stunning. Um, I think to show it off would be a, a real asset to the community. Thank you, Nigel. Further? Go ahead, Daryl. Just a question for Pam. So the grade, uh, the grade that's on that path, mm -hmm. uh, is that going to be altered at all to? I don't believe so. Chris and uh, Parks and Facilities will probably have to answer that. Um, or Nick, even, but uh, I don't think the grade is changing. That wasn't listed in the active transportation plan. Yeah. I can let you know more tomorrow. Okay. So, can we assume that this will be maintained the way the Peak to Plateau or other paved trails are, and our snow clearing machine will be extended through that area? That's the intention. Okay. Further? Call the question. All those in favor? Motion is carried. Uh, next up, we, uh, we have receipt of a report uh, dated March 8th uh, from uh, the manager of community development and communications. Thank you, Pam. Uh, to uh, launch the Kimberly volunteer connector online portal. And uh, as I said, the, uh, the resolution is for receipt. Uh, mover, please. Councillor McBain. Thank you. And uh, Councillor Robert seconds. Go ahead, Pam. Um, this is um, an initiative that we would like to um, put in place starting Monday, March 15th with an organization out of Calgary called Propellus. And it's uh, called a volunteer connector and they have individual community portals on their um, kind of larger website where we can have community organizations upload volunteer opportunities um, that are taking place in the city right now. Uh, so it'll give volunteers meaningful um, volunteer work and it'll help organizations find volunteers pretty quick. So we're going to recruit uh, organizations throughout the community. Katie's going to do an online um, kind of webinar and, and help people figure out how to, how to get their volunteer opportunities uploaded. We already have two organizations ready to go. Um, so I think it'll be a really great addition for the community. Outstanding. Uh, a, a volunteer marketplace. Absolutely. Councillor Roberts. Uh, recently, there's been a, 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 a call from a number of organizations for people to step forward as directors. Mm -hmm. Will that be a piece of this? Definitely. Mm -hmm. Councillor Goodwin. Sam, do you know if we get any input into the design of our section? I, I went on the portal and I 
punched in Kimberly and I got six pages of BC wide organizations mm -hmm. that are also technically in Kimberly, but they're really not local organizations. And it would be nice if those could be filtered out so that the local ones come to the front. They will be. Okay. They will be. It's just a preliminary, just as we started inputting information and Katie's helping me get everything uploaded. Those will come off and our local okay. organizations Good. will be front and center. Excellent. Scott. No one's asked who Katie is, but um, <laughs> now that's Katie Dodd, the daughter of a former CEO of the city of Kimberley. There you go. And what's her role with the uh, with with the uh, organization? All right, awesome. Thanks, Scott. Okay, we'll call the question. All those in favor? Opposed? That motion is carried. Good work on that, Pam. That uh, there's been conversation around town for a long, long time about matching volunteers with opportunities. Um, if I recall going, oh, this is at least five or six, maybe seven years ago now, there was even a, a volunteer fair uh, up at the conference center to try and do just this only on kind of a one day event thing. Uh, it was really difficult to organize and uh, very difficult to get the word out. I think having this portal in place is, is going to be a real boon to a lot of uh, organizations in town. Yeah, uh, great work. Thank you. All right, next up we have... Uh, a resolution to approve a grant application submitted by Molly Miller uh, for uh, uh, for an event that uh, she has attended. Uh, Councillor McBain moves and uh, Councillor Dallum seconds. Um, you want to make a comment? As per the report, um, uh, Molly Miller attended an event uh, in February uh, overseas. And uh, it was originally supposed to be in Germany and last minute got moved to Finland. So she didn't get a chance to submit the application before it did. The trip did cost $3,500. She had 15 fundraised. Uh, she is a student of uh, Northern Michigan University and she does attend classes there. Her family home is here in Kimberley and her parents are still here. Molly has been an incredible ambassador uh, for this city for many, many years. Um, she uh, and, sh and she's really good. <laughs> All right, uh, further comment. Call the question. All those in favor. The motion is carried. And uh, next up, we have uh, have our check runs uh, in the amount of uh, $516,179 and 47 cents. Uh, mover, please. Councillor Roberts. Thank you. Second. Councillor Goodwin. Anything uh, anybody wants to pull out of there as uh, kind of non-routine? Looks like we have a new truck. That would be non-routine. <laughs> we are uh, working on updating the fleet. That's uh, great news. Okay, hearing nothing further, we'll call the question. All those in favor? That motion is carried. Uh, next up, we have uh, correspondence uh, for which we have um, uh, several items this evening. It looks like uh, five in total. Uh, could I have a mover to receive? Councillor Kittle, thank you. And Councillor Goodwin seconds. So uh, let's kind of roll through these one by one. Um, we've got a couple of action items. One is a request for a letter of support from uh, Andrew Bond um, to the, uh, uh, it's a council, it's an accessibility request. Assume council has read through this. Um, do we have uh, a mover to uh, support the uh, to support the writing of the letter? Thank you, Councillor McBain. I don't know. I feel like I need to get my jumper cables. Out there. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah. yeah. Second. <laughs> Councillor McBain moves, and Councillor Kiddo seconds. Uh, discussion. Go ahead, Kent. I think I'll probably support this. It would have been nice to have seen the application. This this letter has some information about what they're proposing, but it's not very detailed. And I I wish I knew a little bit more about what the money will be spent on, how it will be spent, but it's not our money and it's just a letter of support. So I guess I, I'm okay with supporting this. All right, further comments? Go ahead, Councillor Roberts. Uh, I think it... These are saying that whatever kinds of accessible usage and convenience that they want to put into place, 
inside of the community probably should be uh, run past the planning department and and the city. I don't know if that's their plan or not, but just saying. Yep. Thank you. Appreciate the comments. I'll, I'll speak to some of this. About okay. It. Yeah. If you would, that'd be awesome. I know that um, one thing that we're looking at that for sustainable Kimberly uh, are things like electronic door openers for businesses, which are kind of a, an incredible cost for implementing. So this is to try to offset the cost of some of those things and whatever the community buy-in is, is kind of what sustainable Kimberly wants to support in that way. So there won't be anything that goes against planning. There won't, uh, the focus is definitely collaboration rather than implementation. I appreciate that. Thanks. Absolutely. Thanks Kyle. Okay. Call the question. All those in favor. Motion is carried on the board. Nope. <laughs> um, what else have we got on here for action? Happy meals. Uh, what's the requested action on that one? Sign the petition. Sign an e petition. Yeah, I don't think we do that. Um, is there a? Not sure if there's a policy that we have in place, but this is not that dissimilar to um, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for. Help me out here, guys. Declaring, declaring a special day. Declarations. That's exactly right. Not dissimilar to declarations, where you know there is specific support for a specific organization. We, uh, you know, we have a, a policy in place not to do that. At least I think it's a policy. It might even be a bylaw, but uh, it's not something that we've uh, we've done over time. Go ahead. I think we're just talking about it here, and if anybody's listening, I think it's a good cause, and I think somebody, you know, if, if people are interested, they can they can. Uh, Get the get the link and sign the petition. Exactly. Yeah. Thanks for that, Councillor McBain. Um, I think that's the only thing that we had. Uh, we had any uh, any action towards. So with that, then I will uh, call the question on receipt of the correspondence. Guys, comment on. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. Start two point two. The letter from BC Transit. Yeah. Um, I also received a letter from uh, Trail Transit Services, who's going to be the new operator for. Uh, for uh, transit in the area here. Um, small company out of trail sounds like a pretty positive move forward. Um, it is a big change for the community to, to have our office now running out of trail. Um, I'd just like to thank, uh, I'll, I'll be meeting with Kimberley Transportation Society this week to wrap things up. Um, bit of a sad end to uh, about a 40 year history for the Transport uh, Society there. It's changed names a few times. I'd just like to thank Carol Rausch in there at the moment, who's just been doing an, an absolutely outstanding job keeping things going. All the drivers will stay on, of course. Those be uh, being uh, run with new trail transit services. But uh, yeah, I, I'm hoping for a, a relatively seamless transition. Yeah, transitions are what they are, but uh, yeah, hopefully it will be uh, it will be good. Go ahead, Kat. So, Councillor Nigel, uh, Councillor Nigel, <laughs> for Carol's comments. <laughs> Got me thinking that you know we've had a, a council representative to Kimberley Transit over the years, so that there's a way of staying connected to the transit issues in town. Is there a mechanism going to be in place for the new operator to do that somehow? Have, have you heard Good anything? Do we? No, at this point, uh, you know they've just awarded uh, the contract, and I would imagine that uh, there'll be a, a series of meetings to. Uh, you know, kind of get get things in place. Uh, if there's an opportunity to do that, though, we can ask the question. Mm -hmm. sure. maybe, maybe if Troy's still on the line, if he could keep his ears open about that, and there might be a willingness on council's part to make sure there's some mechanism, and it could be, I guess, Troy, but um, I don't know. We want to learn more. Uh, if I may, I, I can uh, certainly discuss with BC Transit and, and pass along the uh, the question or comment there, and and uh, yeah. certainly we'll continue to liaise with them on on many fronts. But uh, I can relay that uh, that comment to BC Transit for sure. Excellent, Troy. Thank you. All right. Um, do we call the question on that? I'll call the question. All those in favor of receipt of the correspondence, uh, that motion is carried. All right. Um, this brings us to uh, question period. Um, 
if there's anybody uh, listening in, members of the public or the media that wanted to ask any questions specific to the uh, material that we covered in the meeting tonight, uh, now is your time to uh, call in. Uh, same number that I had talked about at the beginning. I'll go through it one more time. Uh, that number is 800-741-7180. And uh, if you are requested for a meeting number, it is 187-598-5064. That's 187-598-5064. So while we are waiting to see if anybody is interested in asking questions, let's uh, do a quick uh, roundabout on uh, council items. Councilor McVeigh. Um, just one had a meeting with the uh, uh, the Chamber of Commerce before uh, before right before this meeting via Zoom, and um, uh, we talked about a few things. Just talked about some of the uh, you know some of the grants that we missed out on with uh, the Herbaloo, the, the the paving and the and the Platzel. Um, but uh, the one thing that I did want to share was the uh, uh, the appreciation from the from the group um, about the support for waiving the uh, patio fees this year. Uh, really good, really good uh, feedback from everybody, and, and thanks to be shared with uh, with the rest of the group. So just wanted to pass. Uh, thanks for that. Uh, it was actually awesome seeing the big news item on Calgary uh, News that uh, Calgary City Council had done the same thing. <laughs> We, we are ahead of our time. Yeah. But other than that, that's it. All right, uh, Daryl. Uh, just a couple things. Uh, the Kimberly Youth Action Network has been very busy, even though uh, during COVID-19, it's obviously, um, you know, it's hard for them to um, market uh, what their activities are. So I've asked uh, the coordinator, Lori Joe, to uh, work with them to have a, uh, PowerPoint uh, to come to council and give an update as to what their activities are. So council knows what's happening with the youth action network. Uh, they are busy. They've been very busy. Uh, the other thing is just so you know, the Kimberly uh, underground mining railroad is going to be st uh, uh, starting up again and will be running this summer. Just so you know, uh, it's going to be uh, using protocols again for COVID-19, obviously. So. Uh, they're just uh, starting the preliminary uh, coordination meetings to get get organized and get ready, but it is going to be the train will be running this summer. Yeah, cool. Yeah. So uh, I'm not sure if um, all of council saw the uh, saw the article that was in the uh, Calgary. I think it was the Calgary Herald uh, on the uh, Bavarian transition. Uh, Edmonton. Was it Edmonton? Yeah. I beg your pardon. Yeah. And the uh, obviously the uh, the railway and the interpretive center was a big part of the story in there. All right, uh, Kent. Uh, the only thing I can mention is I attended one of the technical sessions with tech about the groundwater contamination under the city, and that was very informative. And I don't think I will be on the ongoing technical committee, but, but I know some people who will do a great job of that. We certainly have an issue there that's going to last for a few hundred years, at least into the future. <laughs> Hopefully they will stay on it for that long. So, is there something you won't say? You said there was you there was something you wanted to say, but something you wouldn't. Or no, 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 no. That's all. That's all. That was it. Okay. <laughs> Sandra. Well, uh, my role for the nature park is awaiting another meeting, which is forthcoming. However, with regard to the underground mining railroad, my basement is now full of gigantic, filthy pictures from the powerhouse. <laughs> so I have uh, my work cut out for me, getting them all back to normal and cleaned and stained and rehung. I'm not gonna take responsibility for hanging them. I'll clean them, but I'm not putting anything up. So it might fall down. Just to clarify by filthy, you're, you say, you mean dirty, dirty. It's in dirty. Yes, as a, either way you say it, it's misleading. <laughs> I was just asking. I'm covered with, with fluff and dirt and a lot of plaster and stuff that was done during the brief. They, they let them get really good and dirty before they thought, oh, these might get dirty and then, then they put them aside. So they, they're, they're quite something to see. Awesome. They were going to be little, you know, I thought oh, I can have that. That's no big deal. But that building's 300 feet long and 100 feet tall. And those pictures are huge. Some of them I can't even get in the car. Thank you. I've said. <laughs> uh, Nigel. 
Um, yeah, just the, the transport meeting coming up this week and, and just again, thanks to the board for their, uh, their years of service there. Um, next week, uh, we will be meeting with the uh, Venture Web for the brand strategy for Tourism Kimberley. So we should see what that's looking at. Oh, and I should mention the Kimberley Cranbrook Golf uh, webpage has gone live and that's a big improvement. I just encourage you all to go and have a look at that. Um, some new media on there. It's just a more consistent feel. It just looks a lot more professional. So, yeah, I think we're moving in the right direction there. Yeah, and it was kind of cool. Each of the, the pros and our general managers doing a uh, uh, doing a little talk through on their signature holes. Yeah. A little walk through. Yeah, that, was, that was pretty cool too. Yeah. Good job. Kyle. So as it turns out, that article in the newspaper actually uh, made its way to the papers in Ontario as well, because that's where I heard about it. So seriously, yeah, wow. and that's a really easy piece of shit. We've gone far afield yeah. in advertising, easy advertising. Uh, so for my liaise positions, uh, the big thing was the AGM was on the first Tuesday of the month for Kimberly uh, Center for the Arts, Center sixty four, and. It may have been one of the best attended um, AGMs for Center 64 yet. Uh, the board is at max capacity this year. Oh. They actually had one more nominee than spaces available. So, um, yeah, it's uh, it's going to be interesting. I have my first meeting with them tomorrow. Yeah, and, and the other thing that's really interesting is the uh, the average age of the new members that are coming on. Um, I mean, we're talking, I'm guessing, 30-somethings uh, for the most part. Uh, people that have recently moved to town uh, with a lot of uh, experience to bring to the uh, to the arts board. It was, uh, it was just it was an awesome meeting. Yeah, really good. Uh, Lennon Delaney has done a great. He's moved into his fourth year as president and uh, is, is doing a really good job. Did they have to have an election because there was too many nominees? They did. Yeah, yeah. Well, correct. <laughs> did feel a lecture and of uh, raised hands and off offbeat emojis because people were hitting the wrong button and it's not <laughs> how they got the counts in. <laughs> Very good. But and it was it was close. But but, but the good. membership took the high road. The one person that didn't attend was the one that was left out. So yeah. Well, there you go. Yeah. Everybody who attended the meeting was in, and it's a uh, it looks like a really really good group. Yeah. Yeah, some exciting stuff on the horizon for, for sure. Yeah, anything else? That's it for now. All right, awesome. Uh, Maurice, do we have any calls from the public? Although we had someone earlier, uh, that person is no longer on the uh, so. <laughs> can, we, can we call them back? <laughs> I don't have their number, so. <laughs> six, eight. All right, awesome. Thank you for that. So, uh, uh, hearing no uh, uh, questions coming from question period, uh, we do have a closed meeting this evening. So, I would ask for a uh, move to uh, move to closed. Councillor uh, Oakley moves and Councillor McBain seconds. All those in favor? All right, that motion is uh, carried. Thanks, folks. See you in two weeks. <laughs>